welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with... Ooh. With what? <laughs> we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. Forgive with me. With our tribe. Um, drinking a carbonated beverage. And for those of you who know what carbonated beverages do, they carbonate. Um, they be carbonating. And I carbonated in the middle of my intro. Those nice earrings. Thank you. I like those. They new? Yeah. Okay, good. Because normally when I ask if they're new, you say no. Because that means I haven't been paying attention. Yeah. But I actually have been paying they, attention. They've actually gotten a lot of compliments today. I got them from the event I went to on Saturday. They are made by a beautiful young lady um, who happens to be half Ghanaian. So I went up to her vendor table and... Are y'all related? No. You don't act like you're not the one who does that. So then let me be the one to do it. You don't have to do it. I'm just, I'm just curious if y'all relate it. So I saw the name of her brand um, and it said Crown by Ohima. Ohima is a Ghanaian name. Um, believe it means queen. So, or it might mean princess, something, something along those lines. But um, I knew I wanted to buy something from her before I even got to her table. But I kept being bounced around because the friend I went with, she was like table hopping. So um, finally got to her table, saw that it said Ohima, confirmed that she was a Ghanaian. And I was like, well, I already planned on buying one. Now I got to buy a, now I got to buy a, at least two. So I actually ended up buying three because her prices were really good. Um, and yeah, she makes them herself. So definitely wanted to plug her. I'm usually not one for wearing earrings because I have allergic reactions to earrings and I wore earrings on Saturday that gave me an allergic reaction. So now like every earring I'm wearing after that just hurts because my ears are sensitive. But anyway, I did want to give her a plug on this week's episode. Shout out. Shout out, shout nice out. Nice plug. Very so, very well done. So definitely support her. And then the candle too is actually I got it at the event. Um I can't remember her name, but she is half Nigerian and she had an amazing line of candles. Um Belle Flame is the name of her line. Uh, I know she said she's available in about two stores, also online. I think she said she does local delivery. Um, I could be incorrect, but we're currently burning the, what scent is this? Please don't burn yourself. Flower bomb. So um, I smelled it. I really liked the smell. I'm obsessed with candles, like obsessed with candles and her candle line where I, I think I got, I smelled about five of them and then narrowed it down to three and then narrowed it down to this one. Um, cause I didn't want to stroll into the house with a bunch of candles. So that's my other plug for today to it's plugging away to local black female owned businesses and they represent their themselves and their products. Well, so yeah, support if you can, so I would say I'd uh, link all those Instagrams down below, but... He's not going to remember. I'm not going to remember. I mean, you can send them to me, and I might remember. You won't. But um, probably won't. Okay. So what else? Shirt? Shirt's oh, new? Oh, my shirt. Well, this is just the shirt from my favorite podcast. What's the podcast? Ratchet and Respectable. By Demetria L. Lucas. And it says, Don't Waste Your Pretty. And she wrote a book that got turned into a movie. And the title of it was Don't Waste Your Pretty. She's getting ready to move to Ghana. Uh, I think she's going for six months or a year. So super excited. I, Even though I get jealous, I enjoy watching other people enjoy Ghana. Why would you get jealous? Because I haven't really been able to truly enjoy Ghana. Every time I've gone to Ghana, it's been for a funeral. So I haven't been able to go on a leisure trip 
So when people go to Ghana and have like as leisure as you can have in Ghana, um, I get jealous because I'm like, man, I still haven't done that yet. So, uh, but it gives me ideas and reminds me of things to go do when I go back to the homeland. The motherland. Yep. So that's it. I mean, I guess I could plug Nike. No, I don't do that. So what's been good? What you been up to? Just been ripping and running these streets. Yeah. Been busy. Doing what? Working. <laughs> Why? I'm just just oh, I'm I just didn't curious. Know if you were getting no, getting I'm just curious. Something. What you what you what you been up to? It's been a week. Has it? <laughs> since our last since the last episode before this drop, yeah, it will have been a week. I honestly don't know. Like I, I went to the chiropractor yesterday. And he was like, you know, making small talk. And what'd you do this weekend? I was like, I don't remember. Like, I just. We went to a pop up. We did go to a pop up. We went to a pop up on Sunday. Um, Down by the lovely canal. Oh, I thought you said 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 drop by. No, I said thrown by. Yeah, so yeah. um, Our our girl canal, um, Auntie Canal is the girl's. Once they're more familiar with what to call her, call we'll call her. Um, she's goat, but yeah, she threw a pop up. Took place on Sunday. Had different vendors, so I yeah, I have one thing that I can plug next episode that I bought from there. Um, that I bought from the pop up, but she has her own business, Frugal Fido, which is like a doggy or a pet. I think it's exclusive to dogs, but it could be other pets. Uh, consignment. So she does that. She does a lot of pop-up shops. But she kind of just got into this place where she was like paying these vendor fees. And I'm not really getting guaranteed res- like profits from these events. So I'll do it myself. Uh, and that's just how Canel is. Like when she sees opportunity to do something herself, she will do she it herself. Was like, she was like Thanos. She was like, yeah. I'll do it myself. Yeah, and she, she does it. And she does it well. So, also happy belated birthday. I wished her happy birthday, but yeah, shout out. happy belated birthday. Um, I think I'm I'm gonna see you Friday. She's talking about doing like a rooftop tour. Hmm? Rooftop tour? You got kids? Where? The rooftops. What rooftop? Like the rooftop venues in Charlotte. Oh, just hopping rooftops. She made it sound very official. Uh-huh. She said, "I'll send you the details of the rooftop tour." Uh-huh. Why do I? Why am I designated to have kids? Because Kenel's my friend. <laughs> but she invited me to the pop up as well. Did she tell you about the rooftop tour? No, she didn't. Okay then. You know why? She will when I text her. You know why? Because you got kids. Um. So yeah. So hopefully I'll see you Friday. Kids always getting in the way. They are. Uh, go give them to somebody. I took care of them last week, so it's just on you this week. How'd you take care of them last week? Because I took them to my parents. So you didn't take care of them. You just. I'm saying I took care of them being taken care of. Oh, okay. You told me I said you took them somewhere. You didn't take care of them. I made sure they were cared for. So anyway, happy belated birthday. See you Friday, hopefully. But yeah, that's, I think that's it. I feel like I just. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It was cool for, um, she was saying it was her first, how it was her first pop up that she actually like coordinated and put together. Um, and how she tried to, I just thought it was kind of funny how she planned to do it on a day when nothing else was going on. Mm-hmm. But the downside of that is that there weren't a whole lot of people walking around uptown, which I guess, unless there's a game like a Panthers game or, or FC game or something going on at, or a Hornets game, I guess there really aren't a lot of people walking around down, uptown because it's not like there's like a lot of retail, which is something I think they're, they're trying to incorporate in the, what is it, the 2040 plan, I think, for the city. I haven't heard. Um, so it'd be interesting, but yeah, it was it was cool. It's nice to get out on a uh, on a Sunday, no kids, and just kind of stroll downtown for a little bit, and then go into the pop up, and, uh, and there's a nice little change up. Normally, we're just in the house on Sundays, mm-hmm. so it was it was cool. Dreading Mondays. Dreading Mondays. Usually dreading the mess of the house. Dreading the mess of the house. But yeah, it was nice. It's. It's always a nice little switch up to give our musketeerettes to someone else and be able to chill. So, yeah, that was the weekend. 
Yeah, and hopefully they'll stay uh, they'll stay asleep while we're recording this because they've been wild with <laughs> the, the last two. They've been yeah, they're insane not, with their sleep schedules. One's not sleeping, and then one just the other one up. won't sleep by themselves. I like will roll over and Sovereign's just in the bed. I don't know at what point she got in the bed. She's just in our bed. Take her back to her bed, and then she. Sh- strolls right back in the room you'll just hear like the door creak and then shuffling feet so yeah it's been you've worked so hard to not share your bed with your kids only for them to be able to get out of their bed and just come to your bed so we'll see Uh, i'm hoping it's i'm hoping everyone's just in the same sleep regression schedule and we'll outgrow it together because this is this is abnormal I'm not, I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it either. Um, you know one thing we didn't talk about last week? Because it was, I guess it was like a really random episode. But we didn't talk about the event we went to a couple Fridays ago. The church, the church event. Oh, you wanted to talk about that? Okay. Well, I just figured it would be, it would be cool for us Before to. Before we get into that. Because last week I was listening to parts of last week's episode. And I realized we did a huge disservice to Courtney B. Vance and Sterling K. Brown. No, we just it, we didn't include them on the list. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like a, it wasn't a finished conversation. Like I was actually thinking we should probably dedicate an actual segment. Okay, okay. But it wasn't. I we was didn't finish to it. that, and their names popped in my head, and I was like, oh my gosh, we did we did them such a huge disservice because you know we were talking about what I went from great value to ragu to prego. I don't know why pasta sauces were were my point of reference. Um, I don't either. But I got this weird alfalfa. You've had it for a while, um, but I, I was, I felt really guilty. So I said I need, I needed to make sure because those men deserve way more than honorable mentions. They are at a caliber that need yeah, to we, be recognized. Yeah, we were just in here watching This Is Us before we started recording. You were watching This Is Us. I was just sitting <laughs> on the couch. Because you don't have, you don't appreciate. You're like one of those people who can just watch something once and then that's enough. Just be totally done with it. But for me, like if something makes you feel a certain way, like sometimes you want to go back and revisit it and you'll never have that initial experience, that initial feeling you had, but it can still have a profound effect on you. So, okay. But so that's why I was watching it again. He's just a rerunner. I guess I'm just, I'm just a rerunner. I just watch it once and I'm good. I got what I needed from it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, nah, maybe we should do a, an official hierarchy of black actors and, and actresses, maybe. Um, but yeah, so the event we went to a couple of weeks ago. Okay. What was it? You went. I mean, yeah, but I it's mean, not a topic I don't know that, that I want to talk about. You oh, why, said, don't, why don't you want to talk about it? You specifically said you wanted to talk about but it. But why wouldn't you want to talk about it? Because I feel like it's just. It was a private event. Oh, okay. Well, then we won't. But if won't you, that's thing. from me. No, but you no, were the one who brought it up. No, it's fine. We won't, we won't talk about it. Um, if you want to talk about it, talk no, about it's, it. No, that's cool. It's fine. I'll I mean, keep, essentially, we'll keep it, it was a praise. It was a we'll worship session. Yeah. Okay, so why didn't you? But I didn't. It? I didn't know that. <laughs> so going into it, he forced himself. No, you. Because I didn't invite him, and then he got offended that I didn't invite him because I assumed he didn't want to go. So then he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna prove to you that I want to go." So then he came, but he didn't even know what he was coming to. I didn't, and that's your fault. You didn't. Pre- fault. You didn't prepare me for I what knew. I was coming to. Because <laughs> I didn't invite you. So <clears throat> you invite you this. You legitimately invited yourself. No, actually. I was invited by somebody else. So why didn't you ask them what it was? Putting it on me. I don't know, because you were the one who was already going and who I was arriving with. So I figured you just give me a heads up. Be like, yo, heads up when we get in here, act like this. I, should, do I don't that. need to tell you how to act. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Because you, you know do. what kind of environment it is. I didn't know. Because I had this been. This is why you don't invite yourself to things. I didn't invite myself. I was invited. You only came because you were trying to prove a point. I wasn't trying to prove a point. Okay. Um, what I said was, is that you shouldn't not invite me to things because you expect me to say no based on past experiences. Because you always say no. That decision should be left up to me because sometimes, though I may not want to, 
I will willingly do things with you because I know how important they are to you. Okay. And that's all. But I can't I can't ever do that if you don't invite me, if you make decisions for me. It was all I was saying. So I went. Uh we actually took the whole whole family, took the girls. Um we had expected them to hang out with the uh, professional child care that was uh it wasn't that professional. was that it was, was just provided. Child. It was just it's child so funny, care. this is the second time we've we've hung we've gone to something with uh, our friends, the the Bailey's Cynthia was on uh, season one, our first guest I think uh, on season one, and her husband Ian has pitched child care, <laughs> and when I hear child care, I think of professional, right? Like because if you just gonna have some 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 teeny bopper watching watching kids, you're like, oh, I got my neighbor's teeny bopper, they're gonna watch watch your kids, so I already know not to expect professionalism. So the first thing we went to was a couple months ago. Uh, we just we just went down there. What was it was something for you? It was a retreat. It was a retreat, um, and I was supposed to hang out and play basketball with with Ian. He said we'll have childcare at the gym. So I was like, cool. So we roll up in the gym uh, and go up to the area where the kids are at, and it's like some little teenage girl who strayed deer in the headlights when she saw that we had like a brand new baby <laughs> cuz she was like I know y'all don't think I'm about to take care of this baby like I know an intimidated teenager when I see one and she was extremely intimidated by our baby that was like this long at the time so I'm like I can't I can't leave I can't leave I I'm not I'm not going to leave my kid with this kid number 1 cuz she's already terrified number 2 like I don't want I, I just I don't, you know you you get nervous, you handle the baby and then you fumble it. And then, you know, like I, I, I just didn't want to deal with that. So I ended up holding uh, Sonoma and later on some, some older women did come. So uh, some moms, so they knew how to, how to handle the baby. So I was able to give her up, but flash forward to uh fast forward to a couple of weeks ago, we're going to a church, big church here in Charlotte. And again, <laughs> just some teenage kids. So just we just walk in there and Jess is like, we'll just keep the baby. <laughs> and we let uh, our older two girls hang out with the uh, with the other kids. And it was cool. They were running around and uh, Sovereign, of course, kept running back and forth between where worship was happening and and daycare because she's sovereign. She's sovereign. That's what she does. So I, I it's been a while. For me, full transparency, I don't really go to church functions like that no more. Number one, um, pandemic. So, you know, people weren't going anywhere, going anywhere, really. Um, and we had kind of, or you had kind of uh, gotten into watching Elevation because they stream. Convenient. Uh, since the world's open back up, just having gone back to church. So this is my first, like, church function. And wow. Like, legitimate. Um, and like I said, I didn't know if we were just going to like go and some people would be giving some words or if it'd be a combination of worship and words, um, or, you know, if like people was going to get slayed or I don't know what, I don't know what to expect. So, you know, we went in there and they were seating, you know, and there were people were like friendly and everything. And, and I was like, Corey, Corey was on the keys and just Cynthia got up there and, and then Corey started worshiping. So in my mind, me, worship is a time thing, right? What I'm used to, you go to service, the first 20, 30 minutes is worship, and then you you move on, happens in phases. So one, I think the first song he did was like kind of (laughs) long. So it was like 10 minutes. And so he was winding down. So here I am thinking like, okay, like this is about to be intermission. (laughs) It's like we about to get up, move around, greet your neighbor, hug on somebody, like turn to your neighbor, tell him something. So there's a pause and Corey singing. So here I am thinking I'm about to get up. And then he was just like, again. <laughs> and then he started singing again. <clears throat> so I'm like, all right, let me, let me sit back down. And I'm holding the baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to get into the, into the spirit. Right. It was hard. Cause Sonoma wasn't really trying to stay still. Um, 
But you were using her as a security blanket. And so after... No, I wasn't. Because I kept offering to take her from you. You were like, no, no so, I'm good. I'm all good. right, so 30 second time out. So this was your thing, right? We were going because you wanted to go. So I wanted you to try to immerse yourself in the experience. And it's hard to do that, especially as a mom uh, with, you know, with kids hanging off you and especially a, a, a baby. So I was trying to, as long as she wasn't hungry, I wanted to hold her because I've, initially I thought Sovereign would stay with the ki- with the the, ch- the kids so you'd be able to kind of just just be there just focused honed in um obviously that didn't happen because sovereign was running in and out but sonoma was fine she wasn't hungry uh she didn't need to be fed so i was just holding her and it was fine and she, she actually was fairly still like she wasn't really moving around all that much especially when when i stood up so um <laughs> so you know the next song went and then yeah, i thought we were done because i didn't know that this was going to be a two-hour worship session you know why because i never been before because you weren't invited i was invited i i would i would pull my text message up i'll show you my invitation so a text from ian saying dude you should come is not that's an that's literally no, an invitation it's <laughs> that's literally it's that's literally an invitation so anyway so the next song is, is over and then there's a bit of a lull you know what I'm saying? So again, I'm getting ready to, you know, go hug somebody. And then Corey's like, again. And so the song just kept, he just kept going. So I'm like, at, at some point, like, okay, so we're just going, this is going to be a worship session for two hours. I just wasn't ready for it. So once I realized, I was like, okay, so I need to get up and move around a little bit. So um, I took Sonoma, we were walking. Um, and I was, I was, you know, I was vibe. I was vibing with, with, with the Holy Spirit a little bit. Um, not too much. Because I don't want to fall out. I'm saying, well, I'm holding a baby because that would be tragic, right? And then you would look at me like, oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this fool. <laughs> like, got holding a baby and then he got the nerve to pass out to get slain in the spirit while he holding a baby. So. Y'all see what I got to do. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get too deep. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get too intimate. So. Strolling. And, you know, people are, are walking around, but I'm kind of keeping an eye on them just to kind of see what's going on around the room. And, you know, people, you know, going up to the altar, they're getting the oil put on them, they're getting prayed over. Um, and, like, everybody got a word in there. I think you even got a couple, right? Um, but I don't know I don't know if it's because it was just the corner, <laughs> corner I was in or because I had a baby. But, you know, everybody kind of just. Just kind of walk right by him. So I don't know. I guess I, did, I just did. I wasn't and wasn't due for a word. I was kind of disappointed. I thought I was going to get one. I felt I felt primed for a word. Even my my old pastor, uh, <laughs> he just walked right by me like three times. I was like, "Hey, bro, I ain't seen you in a minute. You like you had plenty of opportunities to concoct. That's not how it works. A word for me. They don't cook. But they don't cook. I know. Is, I know. Okay. I know. I'm just. Okay. I'm. I'm doing a little bit of a bit. Okay. Um. But Miss Lisa actually did come over to me uh, and she, you know, she told me and I, you know, she told it to me. It was, it was a private moment, but I'm going to tell you because you need to know what a gem you have. She told me, she's like, you know, you a good dad. I said, I actually, I didn't say anything because I wanted to respect the moment because you know, I was giving you a word. You almost say, well, thank you in the middle, in the middle of a word. She's like, no, you, you an excellent dad. And she put a hand on my back. And she did the little wax on Miyagi joint. And I was like, thank you. I, I actually knew she told you that. I appreciate that. I'm and sure I you did. Knew that and I'm sure more. you weren't going to say nothing about and it I either. I also knew that there was more she had to tell you, but she didn't think you could spiritually handle it in that moment. <laughs> yeah. So that's why you yeah. didn't get your whole word. Because yeah, whatever. you got to get your weight up with the Lord. So a couple of things. You ain't been in the weight room. A couple of things. Number one. Spiritually and physically. Number one. Number one, first of all, um, don't ever underestimate my spirit, my I'm worthiness to handle words. words. So uh, I'll have a conversation with Miss Lisa next time we we cross paths. I'm not the one giving words. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Um, but see, that's that's okay. See, see how you're always trying to one up my moments. That's that's. Patna, How am I pat, pat, Jessica, I was trying to tell you I got a word from somebody 
told me I was an excellent father. And then here you go. She told me she had to tell you more, but you wasn't ready. That wasn't necessary. You weren't ready. It wasn't, it wasn't necessary. He wasn't ready. It wasn't necessary. But anyways, um, I didn't get a word. Based on your actions, I'm, I'm, you didn't deserve one because you're not ready. You're not mature enough to Uh handle a word. (laughs) Anyways, so I'm over (laughs) this because I don't see where this is going. Oh, it was just, it was just interesting, interesting night, but it was fun. Uh, and then of course, uh, we got to speak to, uh, to Corey, who has a beautiful voice, by the way, it's just fascinating, um, gift. Uh, and it was, it was it, all in all, it was a good night. It was, it was a little awkward because again, kind of had to get back to the, to the flow. No, I hadn't really been in a, uh, that kind of environment in a while, but no, it was, it was cool. When music was great, um, you can definitely feel the presence, uh, in, in the room. So it was, it was, I just wasn't, <laughs> I just wasn't ready. Like at the end of the first song, I thought we was going to get up and like kind of move around. And then he was like, again, and then he kept singing. And like after every song, he would say again. So I was like, all right, so we're just going to, just going to loop this. So that's cool. You know, now I know uh, for the next one that you don't invite me to, and I have to get invited by somebody else that uh, I should be prepared to worship for a full 90 minutes. So that was fun. It was a cool night. Okay. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. For letting me tell that story. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you got that off your chest. Me too. I'm glad. I'm glad too. What you got? I mean, it's kind of like it's hard to top. I know it's no, okay. I, don't I just, don't feel the pressure. It kind of threw off. Pressure. It threw off my vibe, so I can't really. I'm I'm not really. What vibe? I wasn't anticipating talking about that, so I it just. Oh. Went, so I I don't I don't know how to follow that. How to pivot? Yeah. Mm. You don't know how to pivot. I know how to pivot. Okay. Well, but what's I can't. W- I just. I don't know. You. You threw off my. My. Sp- I don't know. You threw off my spirit or something. I don't know. I threw off your spirit by talking about. Yeah, Holy I don't spirit. know. I don't know why. You just. It just. I. It wasn't a topic I anticipated speaking uh, about. Yeah. Stay woke. Got to stay ready. In season, out of season. You know what they say. So then, why don't you have something to follow up? Because you insisted. Actually, I. I have. I have several things. Then I, don't, speak. I don't know if you checked the note, but I. I told a story. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about some of the things that you had prepared for this. Just because you don't this. cut me off anyway. Huh? No, I'm not. Go ahead. You stay cutting me off. I have no. not. Just go. No. I insist. This is going to be a short episode then. <laughs> um, did you hear over the weekend about the uh, the far right group? Yeah. That got uh, arrested. Mm-hmm. In Traveling in a, in a U-Haul in what, Iowa, Idaho, same thing. I guess I don't know. But if you're a hoe, you might want to work on that. <laughs> okay. Um, the first, like, then that mass arrest, and we haven't seen a single face of anybody who was in that group. They are um out on Twitter. They had they had some pictures of, of dudes without their masks. When they're on? taking their masks off, yeah. Okay, because they kept they kept them pretty hidden, at least on mainstream TV. So. Um, breaking news they're all white <laughs> all white 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 men oh um protestant patriot front i believe is the name how many name of, of the these group. white supremacist groups are there like I y'all actually, just can't have I, chapters i actually heard this is a callback to a previous podcast that there was a mix of patriot front members and oath keepers that part of that I have been able to confirm with my, my sources on the ground in Idaho. But um, that's, that's just a little blurb I heard on Twitter. And Oath Keepers, man, so, they out there. Y'all, y'all got y'all to gotta watch out. I don't understand how many groups there need to be. Like, y'all can't just have chapters. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not for the KKK, but at least they were just the KKK. And yeah, they had like the <laughs> Grand Dragon and the Grand... What? What other mythol cyclops and random things? But like, if you you were just KKK, there was no yeah. like all of these variations of the same thing. Like just like yeah. just be one. I mean, how many First Baptist churches do we see all over the place? We can afford to just have one organization, and you guys just derive underneath it, as opposed to what Oath Keepers, First Patriots, Last Patriots. 
last man standing like how what how, can you be a member of multiple groups i forget the proud boys the proud boys there's somebody else in there where's the kkk like what are they doing all these groups have outshadowed them they've allowed <laughs> all these groups to outshadow them this is this yeah, is I ridiculous i don't know but can you be I, I mean maybe you need to infiltrate it like that spike lee movie and just see if you can be mem- a member of multiple organizations because like you I can, mean, like Greek life, like div- you could be a member of Divine Nine, but also be like in a fraternity that's like. Yeah, I mean, I could be. Of, yeah, I could. Yeah, I could be like that. Uh, the little black girl on that talk show. <laughs> I tell my mom I'll never be like any of those Negroes. <laughs> I can't remember what the talk show was. It was a little black girl who said she didn't identify as black because she didn't want to be associated with. <laughs> <laughs> any of those negroes it's a it's a really awesome meme that i use from time to time when when people acting out um okay. but yeah i could i could i could do that and they take because you know conservatives they love uh they love black people who kind of go against against the grain a little bit they love to prop them up one of my favorite things is uh like when before this last time when people actually st- i think a good majority of people realized that there's really no place for the confederate flag in the country but in years past events would happen and then of course people are like oh we got to get the confederate flag up out of here uh and all of the uh conservative friends i have on facebook they would always they, there would always be one right there's always one one black dude one black woman whatever who is saying oh it's, it's heritage i'm proud and they would always prop them up like see why can't you be more like this one right here so uh they love they eat that stuff up so uh, it wouldn't be hard. I'd probably have to cut my locks off, though. And I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah. I like my locks. You got to be clean. It's a lot of hard work. Real clean. I know they took the Confederate, they banned it from the Country Music Awards. And I'm, I had clearly had like a spare five minutes. So I went through the comments and people were just ridiculous. One woman did make a comment and she was like, I'm not against the flag itself, but I don't understand but. why you would want to wave something that causes others so much pain or i'm sorry go ahead because i was about to cut you off sorry i'm learning it's okay being better no go ahead i felt i anticipated the cutoff and i stopped my thought or why would you want to be associated with losers i mean people play support sports teams and and they lose and that's true they're still diehard because i'm a recovering dallas cowboys fan so i guess i know something Mm -hmm. about because you know. back when you were into football like that, <laughs> like the next season would come and I'd be like, "Why are you still a Dallas so Cowboys I, I guess, fan?" I guess I do get it, but I, but I, I let it go because I realized it caused me more pain mm-hmm. than anything else. I mean, I wouldn't understand. For a while, I was a Patriots fan, and we were good, so like yeah, all whatever. the way good. Yeah, but I, 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 so her comment was like one of the few good comments, and then of course everyone pivoted to country music wars. Not even about country music anymore; it's pop music. So I was like, okay. And this is the voice I heard them sp- typing their comments in. Um, so there was a part of me that's like, Psh, should I throw some kerosene up in this fire? Um, but I was like, you know what? I yeah. I don't Still, feel like you should have stirred that pot, baby. I, 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 stir it. I, I didn't feel stir like it. Stir it up. Some some days I'm motivated to, and other days I'm just like, eh, not not today. Yeah, that Confederate flag boy, that is um, it's, I it's a wild, don't. it's a wild thing. I uh, I remember uh, two summers ago, there was a there was a big push in uh, Union County, where I graduated high school from. Uh, to there's a monument in front of the old courthouse down there, and there's a big push to have it removed. And uh, unfortunately, in order for that to happen, it would have to be approved by the county commissioners, which are all white conservative men, um, who, irrespect, uh, um, regardless of whatever their own personal beliefs are, are normally going to cater to the will of um, the people who elected them, mm-hmm. their constituents. So I think. Uh, I think they did at least recognize the height of the moment and decided to hold a a public hearing where anybody who was uh, for the removal of the the monument could come out and speak and anybody who was for it to stay up uh, to keep it could come out and speak. And man, because the news covered it and the line, (laughs) 
the line of people lining up to say why it should stand. It was like, I've never seen that many people out in Union County once ever in my life. <laughs> like it was just so many people out there lined up to speak on why the monument should, should stand. Um, and I'll never, even being a recovering Dallas Cowboys fan, I'll never understand how people can cape for such a trash, uh, and they're like a, a trash flag and a trash movement and a trash I mean, belief. It's, it's just we talked we talked about it last season, so I guess we don't have to dig too deep. No, into we it, don't. But it do, it it will never ever ever make sense to me being so passionate to like you said about the losers and the losers who were on the wrong side like Mm -hmm. it'd be one thing if they were losers like i'm sure it would be obviously completely different if if the south had won and you know northerners are you know waving the union flag still but it's like yeah they might have lost but they were fighting for air quotes freedom um but y'all pappy <laughs> was fighting pappy so that rich people could keep their enslaved slaves it's not true it was people who didn't even have slaves a majority like the large population were people who didn't have slaves were fighting for people who did have slaves to keep their slaves it's not true it's I mean, not true jessica it was for states rights <laughs> oh, excuse me the right for states to keep their property states that happen to be human states rights so yeah i don't uh, want to go down that rabbit hole but nah, yeah the confederate flag i'm just like y'all get over it it's get over it it should have been yeah. banned back then like there were so many people who just didn't do their job the flag should not have been it's like you lost you lose your flag like that put in a history book like remember it that way but it should have never been allowed to continue to create the divide so i mean it's just part of the foundation as to why this country is the horrible place that it is it's not that horrible i mean the only benefit to being american is when you're not in america stop it stop it i'm just speaking stop it I mean, you can't go to the grocery um, store. You're gonna get shot. Kids go to camp. Gonna get shot. There, there have been. Although, no, people I shooting up hospitals. I won't say it, but there have been quite a few uh, mass shootings reported, reported on, uh, which is is key because I mean they 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 happen all the time, but they're not always re- reported on. But there have been quite a few popping up. Most recently, there was a mass shooting here uh, here in the Charlotte area. Yeah, I never Gaston got the Yamal. details. Oh, yeah. The, but there was another one before that. Wasn't there one that I shared with you? It was in w- one of those rural counties. I don't know. There was another one. Yeah. No, I mean, that surprised me. But. And, th- and then there was a shooting in... There There have been two shootings in Hickory. So they were covering it on the news. And this, I don't mean to laugh. So this lady, unfortunately, her brother died. And she was like, whatever happened to... Scrap it up and using your fist. Hey, look. I mean, no she's li- not wrong. No lies. No but lies told. the way told. she said it, I was like, your brother just got sh- got shot and died. And you that's... Win, you win some. Not like talking about some. how heartbroken we are. But she was like, what ever happened to just people coming out and, and swinging and scrapping up and we just want to grab guns? And I was, I was like, okay. All right. That's the route we're going to take. That's cool. Um, my condolences. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, condolences. That's that's tough. But I mean, it's kind of. I agree with the sentiment. Like, it's too you know, too many too many people too many tough people. Right? Too quick to pick up a gun to solve issues. Um, I mean, you should one. You could try to make maybe de escalation, right? Like just get a moderator. <laughs> like just just talk. Talk it out. People don't know how to communicate. That's why so many relation so many things break down is because people don't know how to communicate effectively i truly believe that's like at the heart of probably majority of disputes out there 
Uh, I don't know if that's an actual thing. I just think people should learn how to communicate or and or handle their emotions. So emotional maturity being number one and then learning how to communicate feelings that you're having. Um, and if people could do that, I think a lot of uh, disputes, conflict uh, could be avoided. And especially the ones that escalate into, you know, people firing uh, guns or firing what firing bullets at other people who are in the crowds or in the houses or whatever but um i was gonna say something i don't remember what it was i just left uh but yeah the uh that was interesting that there was like 31 of those the patriot front members in the u-haul yeah that had to be hot um we're in the heat wave yeah i know it was it was got it had to be smelling funky up in there so um, I think they found at least one smoke grenade, mm -hmm. they said. So I guess they had planned a riot. Um, pride, a pride festival yeah. that was taking place. That's why they were going. They were going to disrupt the pride festival. So bless so. the person who saw it and actually called. Because in this day and age, people will see stuff and be like, look, not my problem, not my business. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to you who said. Good, good citizen. This, this looks weird. Uh, and it's. And I know there there are uh, extreme groups left or right, but it's amazing how threatened uh, groups like uh, the Patriot Front and, and other groups alike are of just gay people coming together, <laughs> having a having a, having an event celebrating the fact that they're L LGBTQ plus. Yeah, like I, how like why are you so threatened? By people who have absolutely no interest mm -hmm. in you, <laughs> like aren't even aren't even thinking about you, to trying to have a good time, trying to celebrate, and you want to come and cause a ruckus. It it's mind boggling to me it how make any sense. how fragile uh, some of these men are who belong to these groups. It is astounding. A friend of mine keeps sharing like how the same fragile picture, they are, and it's this guy holding up. A sign like damnation to hell for being gay blah 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 and then someone next to him holding a sign with an arrow that says never misses a gay event <laughs> and like every time yeah. i see that i'm like what does that say about mm -hmm. you like <laughs> you real quick to pull up so i mean it's, saying. and you know people are gonna they it's you know all put on god and and christianity and salvation and all of this stuff i'm like do people really care about the salvation of others as much as they like to make it seem when it comes to something that counters their belief? I don't know. That's so it's real deep. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. I happen to be ready in season nine. Season. Clearly, I'm not following my own advice. Because I'm not, I'm not ready to feel that I'm a volley it back. Because you got people who, you know, you have abortion and people are just pro life and save the fetus and save the baby and God has a purpose for them, which I don't dispute any of this. But then when it becomes a life, then you start attacking, oh, why are you on welfare? Why do you need this? Blah, blah, blah. Pull yourself by your own bootstraps. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you got gun issues shooting and shooting in schools churches houses wherever you can shoot but then you also have you know your rights and blah 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 so it's just it it it's like all of these issues that people are fighting oh you know gay gay rights gay marriage is you know contradictory to the bible blah 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 all of this stuff it's you're gonna go to hell but then you know on the contrary it's just it doesn't it's not balancing right. It doesn't make sense to me. And it's like every a sin is a sin is a sin. Like there's no there's no scale of oh this sin is as worse as this sin is worse. Like there it's not there. And if you know, I was always raised that you know someone could murder people, and if they repent, even if it's at their deathbed, they'll be received by God. That's just how I was, what I was taught. Um, so if that's the case, I guess I, and I still need to work on how to articulate it, but it's like, why are certain things your problem? Like, you know, people are quick to overlook, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself, you know, 
but like when black lives matter happened no one like they that a core group of people forget that part like a lot of people were referencing you know you know all lives matter but then people would say you know when jesus gave the parable about the sheep he was like if you know 100 sheep if one sheep goes astray you leave the 99 you go get that one and people like refuse to see the correlation so for me as you know someone who you know considers themselves a christian a redefined christian um redefine yeah we'll have to unpack that go please finish your thought who considers themselves a redefined christian i feel like they're there's not true con- people who are religious are what mess up Christianity, which is why I choose to say a redefined Christian. Um, but religious people subtract like the key th- like takeaways. It's almost as if like someone gives you notes, like oh you missed class. Here's here's the notes I took, and then they just find like the stuff that's not even bulleted or highlighted and that's the stuff they focus on and then when they go to take the test and they fail they're like well i copied your notes and it's like no you just pulled out the things that you felt were most convenient instead of actually breaking down all the facts that were inside the notes that i took and that's how i feel like a lot of christians are where they they are they conveniently pull out the things Okay, the con- the anything condemnation, that's what they're going to pull out. And that's what they're going to use against people. As opposed to like, and, and you know, you've got your people, oh, God is love. I mean, God is love. And yes, there are like balanced rules here and there. But I don't know what's going on. Keep talking. Because I have, I have, that sounds never happened. Now your butt's in my frame. Mm-hmm. Somehow your chair got it. Okay, I thought it was kind of close. Sorry, y'all. Um, so I just, I and I'm still, it's still We're like a th- authentic hair brush vibes. Y'all get to see what goes on. <laughs> it's still something that I'm working on in terms of like understanding and really processing how I feel about it. But I just feel like there's a lot of misuse and mischaracterization of Christianity and just manipulation of christianity and god's word and the bible and all of this and and we've talked about how like there are inconsistencies in the bible um there are inconsistencies just throughout history but i just don't like when people don't recognize that the one battle that they're fighting is imbalanced to the actual issue at hand if that makes sense a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Anything else? No. Okay. You just went. See, I did. you had the hot hands. So I just, you know, I, I keep telling you, you got the hot hand. You're just going to go with it. I did. Because I just get frustrated with I, it. Clearly. Because I just, you know, people will be quick to say, you catch more flies with honey. So, I mean, if you're standing at someone's gay pride event, and you're condemning them and you're holding up signs and telling them that they're going to hell. Like what like what is your end game? What are you what are you because you are probably having an affair with, you know, the head of the choir. That's okay. Okay, it's the pretty, deaconess. What do you want? I'm I'm just saying, like, everyone <laughs> is doing something. Yeah, everybody got everybody. No got, one is sinless. Everyone's right. got their something. Everyone if I'm going to condemn you on this. Oh wait. The the guy they're following said he who was without sin cast the first stone. Like So it's just it's like those type of things where it's just like you wouldn't want someone to come at you for your sin the way you are coming at someone for theirs. If that's seen as a sin. Sure. So that's why I just get upset when, you know, with all the issues. I'm like, that's just not how you this let your life be a display. Of the goodness that is within you. Cool. I too uh, echo those thoughts. Hmm. Or mo- 
most of them at least. Um, well, so pivoting, please. What you got? Um, what did I have? I think I wanted to talk about Lori Harvey because I was, so I'm not too familiar with her in terms of like her contribution to society, but I'm also at a point where I'm accepting that a lot of people contribute to society without actually contributing to society so um of course she's the daughter of steve harvey who is now a judge as well as being a successful host of family feud he hasn't been in a movie in a minute or a tv show but he and he does have a talk show so she's his daughter um i didn't realize that she has she has dated so much in in hollywood i knew a couple years back there was like they were conversation about someone who was dating diddy's son and then ended up dating diddy or was dating diddy to get to his son one of the two but i didn't know who it was so i was surfing through and um it was one of like those black love pages and it was showing like all like you know successful black couples celebrity black couples so you know i'm clicking through and then it would show her with like some rent like a different random celebrity. So I think there's like a picture of her and Trey songs and then a picture of her and Diddy and then a picture of her and Diddy's son and then a picture of her and oh, there were so much, like a whole bunch of different men. And obviously she was recently dating Michael B. Jordan and they broke up. So they broke up and people were just going the typical going in on her, essentially making her come off as a jump off. Do people still say that? Sure. Okay. Um, so I was. Least, I, they do at least tonight. Okay, yeah. I say it. So I wasn't. Again, it wasn't business that I was truly concerned about. I appreciated her and her relationship with Michael B. Jordan because I had a thing against Michael B. Jordan because I knew he didn't have a preference for black women. So I was kind of like, okay, Lori was the catalyst to let you see that black women are great why would that bother you if he did if his preference was non-black women the way in which he vocalized it how did he vocalize it he made it very clear that his preference is in black women and i just think that's that's disrespectful how did he go about that i can't remember this was like five years ago i can't exactly remember but i remember being offended by it so i was always on the fence with do i really like him or not because i personally don't care for men who are blatant i don't care for black men who are blatant to say they don't like black women i think that's offensive do you hold that same judgment against black women who say they don't prefer black men no yes and no so i'm usually the type to be like you just got to find the right one but i also take into account that like yo some black dudes are just so Trash. So why is it why is it all bad if a black man has a preference? It's it, because why, how how are they not equal society situations? Society doesn't attack. I mean, society does attack black men. They usually like shoot them, but um, society or incarcerate in, them. Yes, but mm. just in terms of like appeal, attractiveness, society doesn't attack black men the way it does black women. You know, if you're not the right tone, if you're not the right complexion or you're dark skin, you're the, there's always, there are so many levels in terms of being a black woman that can be used against you. And if it's not your appearance, it's then, oh, how smart are you? You're too smart. You're not smart enough. All of this stuff. So I, I don't see a problem when a black woman chooses to step outside of her race because a lot of times they're never disrespectful about it i i've been hard i I won't say that i've never come across it but i'm it's not i'm not usually around or i haven't experienced black women who are just like oh well you know i don't like black men's hair i don't like you know cocoa butter i don't like like there's there's oh when it comes when the black men i've been around who don't prefer black women it's like oh i don't like bonnets i don't like this i don't like it's 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 things that not are not necessarily in a black woman's control like it's just culture like i sleep with a bonnet on my hair because my hair texture 
will dry out when it rubs yeah, against. You don't have to explain bondage to me. I'm, okay. Um, I'm, I'm explaining it to the audience. Not everything's about you. See? You're, you're looking at me. Because so right now you're the audience. You're the person here. No, no. The audience put is some right, seats, audience put is right some there. Seat. See? This is why black women are ditching black men. Y'all are combative. <laughs> no, I'm you're not. Combative. No, I'm not. You are combative. You can try to get me to be combative by saying combative. I'm combative. But um, so no, I am harsher. I am I am harsher to black men um, because I, I they're usually disrespectful and hurtful about it. And, and you know this to be to be fact. Like you've you've shared stuff with me, like that one podcast where dude was just like. Those two dudes are randomly. Those are two. In. Those are two black men. Yes. Yeah. So they don't represent all black men. They don't. But a majority of black men who it's one thing if you just, you know, just making your way downtown, and you just randomly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fell in love, Man, well, fell in love downtown. with someone of another race. This one. That's <laughs> one thing. <laughs> but there are some people who are deliberate and they will tell you like I have I have been out with girlfriends, you know, to try to talk to a guy. No, nah, I don't really, I don't really rock with black chicks like that. What? Like, where's your mom? What's what? You don't rock with your mom? You don't walk with your? Do you have a sister? How's that any cousin? different than a woman saying she doesn't date men who are at least six, six feet? It's a preference, right? Yeah, I mean, she wants to wear heels and she doesn't want to emasculate. Her. <laughs> I feel okay. like that's where a lot of that comes from. That's not necessarily like. I mean, someone will probably be like, "Oh, you're you're small," but a lot of times, it's. I'm a woman. I'm already of a certain height. I like to wear heels. I don't want to have to deal with your insecurity because some men don't care. Like there, are, I've watched segments of shows where they're like, "I want a woman who's taller than me." Like that's just their prerogative. But there are some women who probably recognize that, like, yeah, you might be a great guy, but I don't have the capacity to handle your insecurity of me being taller than you, and then I have it's to. Not, sh- it's not, not I'm it. not done, and then I have to shrink myself for you. To feel comfortable so that's that's a perspective that i think needs to be considered as well and then there are just some people who find tall men attractive maybe their dad was tall their uncle was tall maybe a short man did something to them so they're like no i need a tall man like but a lot of times i feel like people just aren't disrespectful about it but a lot of times when black men have a preference outside of the black race they're just i mean i've had it told to me i had a guy i had a crush on him we were talking and he blatantly was like oh well i don't have enough muscle to be with a black woman we were in high school and i mean at the time i was a teenager so i didn't process it but like that was a statement that stuck like i'm 16 years later that's still a statement that sticks with me because it's the implication that there's a body mass you have to have to be in a relationship with a black woman implying that you what you need to be able to physically handle a black woman so it's it's those type of statements that i feel like i had a preference for non-black men but I never, like, if a black man ever approached me, I was never like, oh, you're black. You're not my type. No. I'd still entertain a conversation with you. I entertained a conversation with you. Look at us now. Whole house full of kids that are black. Got me some African kids. So, like, that's the point. If the roles were reversed, not saying you personally, but a majority of black men would have just like, nah, you're 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 not my type. So that's why I had a thing against a partial thing against Michael B. Jordan. But I appreciated the Creed movie, so it's balance. It has nothing to do with like Oh, I find him attractive because I don't. I don't. I'm not a fan of his neck. I'm just um, waiting. I'm just waiting for when I can speak. Oh, you can speak. You were just sitting there, so I figured. You yeah, because I tried to talk. I'm speaking. Because I was still speaking, and okay. you cut me off very regularly. So I told myself this season I was going to stand up for myself and make sure I speak my thoughts completely. Because yes. you need to stand up for yourself with me. Okay. I do. Sometimes you be rude. I sure. listen. I be listening back to some old podcast. Like, wow, people probably think I'm battered. Nobody thinks you're battered. No, people think I'm battered. No, they don't. Are you okay? Um, 
so I'll, I want to I want to be clear about something. I'm obviously uh, pro black women. I think now they're the uh, they're there. There is no uh, black beauty is unmatched as it pertains to, to black women, in my opinion. Um, I just. I'll say this and I don't want you to take it the wrong way, but I just love black women. Like I, I, just, I genuinely do. Um, and which is why I'm, I'm married to a beautiful black woman, African. Like I take pride in that because just like you just, you're, I, I can get into it. <laughs> I don't want to be dirty with your, your facial structure and your, and your curves, like it's just, it's just beautiful and not in a, um, objectifying way, but in a true, um, appreciative way of your elegance and your beauty and the grace you walk with and the way you carry yourself. Like, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful thing to me. Um, but I asked the questions I asked specifically because, um, it's a bit of a double standard and I feel like everybody recognizes it. Um, but for some reason, you, and I'll just speak to you because you're here in the room with me, <laughs> like to do mental or verbal gymnastics to try to justify the double standard. Whereas I would have just so much more respect and would be at peace with the situation if people would just be like, yeah, you know what? It's a double standard. If people would just admit it, I'd be like, cool. It is what it is. It's just one of those things in life. Everybody acknowledges it. Let's just move on. We'll continue to talk about these these individual topics as they come up. But as it relates to the greater topic, we understand that it is a double standard when it comes to how black women feel about black men dating non-black women versus how black women feel about black women dating non-black men. I am not uh, trying to minimize the impact the comment that was made to you in high school had on you. Um, but I do think it's problematic if you let that frame every the mindset of not even every single, but the majority of black men out there, because you don't know majority of black men out there. The majority of black men are not on Twitter men you see interacting with women on Twitter or making statements on Twitter are not all black men, just like the comments made by black women on Twitter do not represent all black women in the world. What you're doing is taking situ certain situations that you've seen that you've been a part of and those have impacted you, obviously, and situations impact everybody. Yes, but those are anecdotal. They're not. They're not. I don't believe that they're majority, I would say. Um, I just don't. Okay. But I don't think it's fair to say, to be more critical of a black man that chooses to state his preference, however ill-willed uh, and informed and, and disappointing it is, even from my perspective, if they prefer to date specifically not to date black women. I think that that's a shame. Um, but to not have that same energy for a black woman who doesn't want to date black men, I just think it's, it's just being willfully contradictory. And I just would, I would feel better if people would just admit it and we could just keep it moving. No, but people, not, do, but people don't want to do it. it and people want to try to, it's not real. It's no, like you're when trying a white to person calls a black person racist. Like, no, it, like me, and I'm not racist, but it's like me. People who say they're not racist are racist, by the <laughs> like, way. So <laughs> have to way, just say if, they're not racist are racist. If, because the way society is built, men are, men have more buying power relationship wise, which is why you have women who are just being drugged through the mud relationship wise, just trying to find a man like dude, just from what I hear, like it's rough in those streets. It's rough for everybody. It is. You're fine though. It's not rough for you. Not rough for everybody who's oh, in the streets. Okay. Um, I'm not. I'm not out there. You better I not be. I don't want to be out there. 
you best not be. So it, it, the, I guess in history, there's been, you know, it has come off as like a, when a, it is perceived or sometimes black men can make it perceived that they are superior to their fellow black man if they have a woman who's not black. Like, oh, I've accomplished this. Whereas I don't feel black women give that when they are with someone who is not black. It's like, oh, this is my husband. But like, when some, when, again, I may have partial bias. There are plenty may of, have. there are plenty of couples who, like I said, dude's making his way downtown, <laughs> walking fast, faces past. And he's homebound. And he just so happened. Like, I recognize that there are organic relationships where people are just like, oh, you just so happen to be a different race from me. But I love you. You love me. Let's get married. Sure. That I don't disqualify that. But there's also a subset of people, of, of men, because I'm speaking from the male, like from the perspective as a black woman looking at me. There is a subset where it's 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 a hunt i am intentional i only want to be with this type of person sure and the way of which they choose to go about it is hurtful demeaning and insulting well i don't like being with i don't want to be with a black woman because black women are too loud you know black women are too you know independent black women blah 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 is it true huh is it true that black women are too loud? Yeah. No. No way. Mm. But that's offensive. That that's that's what you've put on it. But then, you know, same dude will be like, oh, I like a fiery Latina. Latinas are loud. Like, so like it's it's a it's a it's qualifying something for one race and disqualifying it for another race. And it's the it's the verbiage used around it. It's how it's delivered. Again, I am not because we are surrounded by interracial couples. Like I feel like the couples in our life are interracial, and we are the oddball out because we're we're of the same race. But I recognize that oh, like they just fell in love. Cool, but at least myself, I can spot the difference between just fell in love and I think I'm superior because I was able to acquire a partner who's of a different race. It's just hard being a black woman. I should have worn my trust black women shirt again. So that's why I was on the on the fence with Michael B. Jordan. Again, why I appreciated his relationship with Lori because and I'll emphasize, this is none of my business. I don't know these people. I'm probably never going to know these people. But I appreciated it because it was like, oh, remember when you were out on that yacht only with the white girls? Like, you just wanted to be with white girls, blah, blah, blah. And now you're over here passionately in love with Lori Harvey. And she's a black woman. Hold it down, sis. So I was here for it. And the only reason why they broke up, they've got a 10-year age gap. She's 25. He's 35. He wanted to take the relationship to the next level, which is for a 35 year old man is marriage um which is a good thing because people are upset with men in these streets who want to stay in the streets instead of you know getting onto avenues and buying houses so i respected her because she was like i'm 25 i'm not trying to get married i got married at 24 like i get it like if it's not for you like don't force that but people were tearing into her like like I said, making it seem like she was a jump off, making it seem like there's something wrong with her instead of respecting the fact that she was like, my life's goal is not to be married right now. I'm only 25 my, and I'm not just going to marry someone because he's a good dude because he flower showers me with flowers and all of the fine things and flies me around the world. And I guess I was just bothered because, you know, I'm I'm a daughter of mothers. I'm a mother of daughters. Can excuse me. Can I, ask, can I ask a question? Sure. Who was tearing her to shreds? I mean, society. Black women. <laughs> this is not interesting. Because <laughs> I, I had a... I, but, you I, know, no, no, no. I, I, I had dudes a... Were, dudes I had were coming a, for her, too. I, I dudes had, were the ones who were making her seem like a, a I jump off. I had a suspicion. Dudes. I suspected that you might utter the words, 
black women were tearing Lori Harvey shreds. Now, isn't that ironic, Jessica, dear wife of mine? Men were coming for her, too. Because you done broke your back bending over trying to defend this this argument. Right? Because and yet, society and yet, has taught black and yet, women to pitch when a themselves black, against and yet, each other. When a black woman was chosen by a black man and decided that she wasn't ready for that relationship to go to the next level, which was completely her right, mm-hmm. it was black women who tore her down. Yeah. Interesting. Because society has pitched black women against each other. Yeah. Y'all keep blaming society. Yes. Y'all keep doing that. And, and not taking responsibility for your own actions I, and thoughts. I'm here defending her. Because I support the fact that she recognized that, hey, at 25, I still have a lot of life to live. And I don't want to get married right now. But I don't understand people attacking that. I don't either. But that's not my mean. That's not my issue here. My issue is still just the fact that you won't admit to it being a double standard. Again, again, if we, we would all just acknowledge it and move on. I would be. It's I would have no problem. problems with it. Absolutely not. Because there are so you, many other. There are so you, many. There's so many also other. Not, there's stuff you're not recognizing. There are so many other double standards well. in life that we just, as a society, we accept, and we just we, we just accept it. Like white people can't say the n word, or you get canceled. Just accept it. Yeah, rappers are gonna rap. Kids in the schoolyard, they gonna say it. Certain certain uh, parts of the culture, they gonna say it. But don't you dare. As a white person, mm-hmm. utter those words or you will be canceled. It's a double standard. But we all accept it and we move on. So it's not like it's uncommon. If we would so just, you if we just accept it and the, move on. The, the difference? I would be completely okay with it. What difference? You, so you've never encountered a, a, a male you know whose preference is not black women and had him say or speak of black women in a derogatory way. Or just um, in an impolite way. We'll say it like that. I'm sure I've been in the presence of someone who's, who as a black man has spoken like that. But not anyone I would be close to. No. There have been black men who I've been close with who have only dated, while I've been around them, have only dated white women. But they haven't spoken, they haven't gone out of their way to demean black women. They've just because dated. they were just making their way downtown. <laughs> they were making, yes, they were making their way or downtown. Or maybe they were going down specific streets. I mean, there's but yeah, that, of course. I'm not. I'm too. not saying there aren't people out there who are uh, malicious, who who don't just have their preference and keep it moving. I know that there there are there are black men out there who are malicious with their words and they go out of the way again. Like the podcast I share with you, Fresh and Fit. They even though they tried to hide behind the fact that they do comedy on their show, it's still. Yeah, it's still disrespectful. You could just say, yeah, we don't, you know, and our I'm preference our preference people, is not black women. But that doesn't change the fact that those, I, you're, I still feel like we're taking a small, a small sample size and trying to automatically multiply it out and say, therefore, this is the opinion of or this is the behavior of the majority of black men toward black women and that i don't think the one that's fair and i also honestly just don't think that that's the case i don't feel that my and, verbiage implied and that no it it it's you when you say black men don't by and large black men don't because by and large but you don't know that because but you don't I know do. the majority of black men you the can't by take and large black you can't men t- i'm exposed to that you're exposed to and but you are like, exposed to a very small amount of black men relative to the amount of black men that are in this country let alone the world. So you, it's unfair for you to say, you could say based on my experiences, based on the 10 or 15 black men that I know, that would be fine. But to just say with a blanket statement that black men as a majority don't do this or black men as a majority do this, I just don't think it's fair You're just because... you of black men. I almost cussed. <laughs> I almost said no. <laughs> sh- yeah, because I'm a black man. and But again, I would let you have that if you would be if you would be willing to say but it's a, I, but it's, it's a double it's standard it's not a double standard it is and that's and again, fine I if you don't want to i'm not saying that people shouldn't have their preferences like i if y'all don't want if y'all don't want to make it i have my fine. preferences not racially i had like characteristic traits background traits that i wanted in someone that i married or was with but so i'm not i'm not saying that but even so like i knew i personally said 
I wanted someone who was from a two parent household. But I've dated people from single parent households. So like it's not And I've been attracted to women who aren't who aren't black. See? Yeah. I didn't know if you had more to add to that. No, I'm just saying, like it's. I mean, I've been attracted to men who aren't black. I don't know. So you told me you were you were told to to marry a white man. It was suggested. Yeah, you were told to, and that's and that's fine. Like I don't blame you for things that were told to you, but um, I, I guess what I'm just trying to say is, I just want us to be. I just wants to be fair about this. I just don't want us to be contradictory anymore i don't want i don't want us to try to run from the double standard it's okay if y'all if if that's the way it has to be that's fine i just want us to admit it it's not a double i just want to admit it and what's so funny is that you can't bring yourself to admit that it's a double standard black women okay we're going we're going in circles so um because i feel like but as a natural default because black women are protective of black men our default is to want to be with black men but then you get black men who go out of their way to reject us so then we're like we're left to be to an extent sloppy second so it's like if this person who is not of my race will accept me and wants to love me and build a life with me then by all means i will do that and i will say yes sis you deserve that but on the contrary because I've been exposed to so many black men who treat having a woman of another race as like a trophy and achievement, I usually question their motives. Mm-hmm. When you were making your way downtown, were you intentionally stopping in coffee shops that were on certain streets in certain blocks to try to attract a certain demographic or did well, things happen organic? I'll tell you what, y'all go ahead then and run to <laughs> your non-black men whose grandparents and ancestors were waving Confederate flags and y'all go ahead and just y'all get down with that then. I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> Oh I'm not man! Saying it's easy. I'm just putting. Oh my gosh! I'm just putting it out there. It's a double standard. But a black man who marries a white woman is going to deal with the same thing too. Of course, any everybody's going to deal with the same thing in terms of, um, or has the potential to deal with the same thing in terms of how their relationship is viewed and accepted. Nowhere near what my argument is. I'm just saying that it's there's no double the standard. same the same mindset is on both sides and maybe can be sounding like Trump since both sides. It's the same, same mindset, both sides. Wrong. Um, and I just wish people would be honest instead of trying to make themselves seem like the, the decent ones in the equation. When, when black even... women have, have unfair, um, you know, preconceived, uh, notions and, and, and biases too. Like, it's just, it's just, this is just the way it is. It has, it has, there's no way it could just be one side. There's absolutely no way, but nobody wants to admit to it. So that's fine. I was hope, I was hopeful that here at Rush Vibes, we could come to an agreement and just acknowledge the double standard. It's not a double standard. But since we can't do that, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed. Anyway, but it's, it's we okay. haven't even really been able to unpack the actual topic that I'm like, you keep stunting me from getting to the actual topic. They broke up, so... They broke up, and I don't yeah. understand why people had to attack her for it. Well, that's your black woman. And nobody's... <laughs> As black women, why they're trying, they trying to eat one of their own. Because mm-hmm. no one's coming for him. No one ever... No one's coming for the, for the guy who wanted to marry her? Is that what you're saying? Because you said they broke up because he wanted to take it to the next well, step and she wasn't ready. So why would they come? Sources say. Sources, okay. Allegedly. So why would people come for him, though, even if that was remotely true? I mean, maybe he should have just waited for her till she's ready. That's fair. But if she's allowed to not want to get married, he's allowed to have his feelings, too, right? Sure. So maybe they couldn't compromise. They couldn't be in the middle. Like you said, he's 35. He may not have, he may feel like he ain't got time to wait. He may want to. He's a dude. Dude's been stringing women along for years. Yeah, but I mean, everybody. Centuries. Maybe he's, maybe he's at a place where he realizes he's 35 and maybe there's been a shift in his mindset. 
as evidenced by the fact that he finally uh, decided to be with the black woman. Who knows? Maybe that's not a that's not a isolated decision. Maybe it speaks to a change in his you know his mindset and his approach in general. So maybe he realized that hey, and I don't know this. I'm just literally just spitballing. But maybe he wanted to have certain things in life that come from a relationship within a timeline. Maybe he was looking toward having kids. Maybe he was looking toward, forward to being married, starting a family. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I, I do know that, you know, ain't nobody out here getting younger. So it's unfortunate. It you know, you hate to see anybody break up. But They were a cute couple, too. They seemed genuinely happy. I guess so. It's too bad. Hopefully they can uh, they can each bounce back. I'm sure they'll be just fine. I'm sure they will too. They're both pretty decent looking people. They'll be okay. <laughs> they can find themselves. And maybe they'll work their way back to one another. Perhaps. So what else? We're at, we're at hour 20. Is that is that good? Is that a good place to stop? You got something else? I mean, I've got plenty. But Do you? Because you always say that, but I feel like you don't ever like... Well, clearly you didn't check the notes because I put some things in there. I saw that you edited it. Yeah, I put some things in there. Speak. Nah, it's been at hour 20. You got that. No, I do. It's, there's, several, there's several things Didn't that I have. an extended vibe. No, we can do... We can cut the cameras and then we can do a... We can do a extended vibe. Why don't we just stop, count to like 30, or close out and then no, just No, well, one, because I want to turn the cameras off. No, I don't want to turn the cameras off because then they'll have to refocus them. So we'll stop here. Okay. And then we'll stop, start, and then we can do 15 minutes on one of my other topics. And then that'll be a separate release for this week. Okay, let's do it. All right. So um, that's our full episode. So appreciate you guys um, sticking through another back and forth with uh, between Jessica and myself. Promise you guys. Actually, no, this kind of is what our relationship is like. I mean, we do agree on a lot and we do get along, but um, we we kind of go like this. Are you placing a blanket statement over our relationship? No, I'm actually being very descriptive of our relationship. We get along very well. We're very silly. Um, but a big part of our relationship is us challenging each other's mindsets and ideas. And I think that's healthy. Honestly, ultimately, we don't always handle it the best way. Um, I think it's it's great to have a partner who challenges your your mindset and your thoughts and challenges you to one explain yourself uh but to be better if you through the conversation or through the challenge you realize that oh this might not be right so that's just my opinion but i I love when we go back and forth because I always come out better for it but um this is a Friday drop it's Friday no, why are you looking at me this is a Friday no I'm telling this is oh. this is a Friday drop okay. um Sorry, last week's episode was late, one late and non low definition. <laughs> I was just um, constantly fighting with YouTube. But uh, we'll have a Juneteenth episode next week. Um, we're expecting to have a guest. I don't want to jinx it, but um, our first guest of the season. Uh, so we'll incorporate that into our uh, Juneteenth episode. So looking forward to that. Um, YouTube, subscribe, hit the like button. Feel free to comment. Especially if you feel like one of us was out of pocket, go ahead and, and, oh, and let us, us was right in and the let pocket. us let let us know in the comments. Uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, show us some love there too, and um, uh, you can always hit us up on uh, not hit us up, but uh, give us a review on Apple and Spotify and Google and all those places where you can get your podcast. So, anything else? No. <laughs> all right. We'll uh, we'll see y'all on the next vibe. Y'all be good. Peace. Yeah. None but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now.